Hello, everybody. It is Dr. Barrett. And I just finished the first stage of my functional medicine certification through the IFM Institute for Functional Medicine. And I have so much to tell you guys. We are going to have some really good uh, conversations here about root causes of headaches. And I want to start with an explanation of leaky gut. I feel like there are two main things that my patients tell me when I start talking about leaky gut and migraines. Number one, I don't have any gut symptoms. And number two, even if I do, what does that have to do with my migraines? So I really want to focus on those two topics today. So first problem, I don't have any gut symptoms. So here's what we see when we do a deeper level of testing on many people with migraines. First, so many people have food sensitivities that they don't know about. Now, what do I mean by a food sensitivity? It does not mean that you eat it and you have some sort of reaction like a migraine trigger or you know, anaphylaxis, like when people who have peanut allergies eat peanuts. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is you eat something and your immune system reacts to it. All right. Now there is testing that can be done to figure out if your immune system is reacting to things. And I think that's important information for you to know because it is often going on in the background and you're not aware of it. You don't have symptoms of it. Easy testing to get done is called IgG food allergy testing. There is some resistance to this, I feel, in uh, the conventional medical community because these food allergies can change over time. So I understand how that may seem like this is not valid information, but what's going on behind the scenes is that your body actually does react to certain foods at certain times, and then it doesn't react to them at other times. It can change. Your body is a moving target. Your gut is in various stages of healing. There are other problems going on in your body. Maybe you're going through a stressful time. Maybe you're not sleeping. All of this works together to determine how your immune system is going to react to things. Now, the important thing for you to know, of course, is what's my body doing right now? What do I need to be avoiding right now in order to turn off the inflammation in my body? So that is the first piece of you know, people not feeling like they have any gut symptoms. So what I'm saying is it's important to get information so that you can get that objective data. Well, here's what my immune system is doing, regardless of how I feel, this is what my body's doing. Second thing, you may simply feel the way you've always felt because you've never felt any better. <laughs> and I, I hate to say that, but that, that happens a lot. And it happened to me in my own life. So my story is that my daughter was diagnosed with celiac when she was four. I was not crazy about having to make two whole different meals for the entire family. So for a lot of stuff, we all just went gluten-free. And what I realized after going gluten-free is that my body had been reacting to it. I just didn't know it because that's the only thing I had ever known. I had never gone through a period of time of not eating gluten to understand how my body felt then compared to all the years when I was eating gluten. And the main symptom that I noticed in retrospect is that I would go through periods of time when my intestines were literally inflamed and big. And to me, I just sort of felt fat. Do you know what I mean? Like I thought, well, I must've just eaten too much or something. I did not understand that that feeling of my belly feeling like three months pregnant, that that was actually coming from inflammation inside my intestines, I just thought, well, I overate or, you know, whatever, whatever else I would chalk it up to. But because I had never experienced life without that feeling, I didn't know that it was abnormal. And so I find that in a lot of the people I work with in the office and online, that once they experience life without whatever it was that was going on in their intestines, they're suddenly like, Oh, I didn't know this was the way it's supposed to be. I thought that was just my body. You know, my body is like this. And so I think a lot of times we feel that the way our own experiences is normal and it's actually not normal or optimal. Does that make sense? So I guess there are two components of feeling like I don't have anything wrong with my gut. Number one, 
you ha don't have any objective data about what your body's actually doing. And number two, maybe you just don't know any better because you've never lived in a better place. But if that problem were to be fixed, then you would live life from a different place and you would feel a lot better. So that I think is part of the problem that we run into. Now, the second part of the problem we run into is what does my gut have to do with migraines anyway? I take care of a lot of people who have things like inflammatory bowel uh, syndrome and they're, you know, it, they're, they're like, well, isn't that a separate problem? That's an intestinal problem. What does that have to do with my migraines? So that I want to dive into a little bit more fully in this video. All right. So here's what happens. Your, let, let's just say your intestinal lining can become damaged from any number of things. It can be food allergies. It can be toxins. It can be medications. It can be lots and lots of different things. Let's just say that, that that's a whole other conversation about what can incite this process. So let's just assume that that process can happen. Now, here's what goes on in your gut after that damage happens. Right here it is. So this is a normal healthy gut over here on the left. See how it says normal tight junction? That is normal. These pink things with fingers on them, um, those are cells inside your intestine. So here's the way it's organized. Up at the top where the little finger guys are, th those are the villi, by the way. Remember from conjunction, conjunction, junction, what's your function? Like it was, you know, along come the villi, which look a little silly. I remember this from my childhood. I'm thinking maybe some of you do too. Anyway, those are the villi um, and they're connected to these, these cells and um, stuff gets absorbed from the top of the image in your intestinal tract. Um, these cells are basically here as a barrier. Okay. They're a barrier to the blood. Okay. That's the, the blood is at the bottom, the giant red thing. Just imagine that as your bloodstream, your body. Okay. And you want the stuff inside your intestines to stay in your intestines, right? It belongs there. It needs to be digested or eliminated or whatever. It's not supposed to come into contact with your bloodstream. That's why you have this uh, epithelial cell layer here um, with what this brush border along here. And this is all coated in a mucus lining, okay? The mucus protects the cells. The cells protect stuff from getting into your bloodstream. That's how it's supposed to work. So what happens when you get uh, damage to these cells from, uh, let's say there's something that comes along and disrupts that mucus layer or kills these cells or damages the cells, like here on the right side of the picture, the very right, you can see when this cell gets damaged, two different things happen. Those particles in your intestines, the little brown things here, uh, appropriately colored, right? Uh, come across the cells and then they get into your bloodstream where your immune system can react to them. Your immune system's like, well, man, you do not belong here. I'm going to react to you. And um, then the, those cells get damaged and the tight junctions, normally these cells are super close together. They're snuggling up cozy. That connection gets disrupted. And then that's where the leakiness is happening is that basically stuff inside your intestines is now no longer separated from your immune system. And then it gets there into your immune system and your body reacts to it. So that is essentially the process of leaky gut or intestinal permeability. That's the kind of behind the scenes that's happening there. So when I say that people are often reacting to things and they don't know about it, what that means is in that blood vessel there, the immune system is reacting to something that's getting across. So there are a number of ways that can happen, right? Maybe you, your body's reacting to the food particles um, because you truly do have an allergy to that, that you don't know about an allergy or any kind of a reaction to it. Maybe your food particles are not getting fully digested. You're on a, you know, a purple pill, a PPI, an acid medication. And so your food is not being fully broken down in the stomach. And then by the time it hits the intestines, there are still undigested food particles, uh, that don't belong there. Your body will react to that. So in all cases, the underlying problem is that your immune system is being triggered. Now, why does that matter? That matters because when your immune system gets triggered, 
those cells release chemicals and they are kind of nasty little chemicals. They're cytokines, interleukins, and what those chemicals do, they go up to the head and they trigger the trigeminal nerve, which then causes a migraine, all right? So the trigeminal nerve has a little ganglion right here. It's got a branch that goes down here, a branch that goes over here, and a branch that goes up here. It's kind of in your, in your face like this, okay? That's what the nerve does. Now, these little nerve fibers are very sensitive to inflammation. Like if you've got a sinus infection, a barometric pressure change, or things like that, or you get dental work. I mean, these are all things that can trigger headaches, right? It's happening because there's inflammation at these little nerve endings, the little ends of this nerve. So they are sensitive to inflammatory chemicals. When those nerves detect inflammatory chemicals, this nerve fires. It's like, whoa, whoa, we got inflammation going on here. Oh, you know, fire alarm, fire alarm. That signal travels back to the brain stem, um, which is the part of the brain that connects the brain to the spine. And there's a little, like a light switch back there. And when that light switch gets flipped, it generates the whole cascade of problems in the head that result in the experience of migraine. Does that make sense? So it's the chemicals that are released by the cells in the gut reacting to those food particles getting into places where they shouldn't and then going up to the head that triggers the headaches. Does that make sense now? How, how it is that gut problems can cause headaches. Now, if it doesn't make sense to you that inflammation could be a cause of migraines, just think about this. Have you ever taken an over-the-counter anti-inflammatory medication like naproxen or ibuprofen for your headaches? Yeah, there you go. Your own, you have that experience within your own body that inflammation causes headaches and blocking it can relieve it. Or has your doctor ever given you a course of steroids to treat a, um, a refractory migraine, you know, one that's gone on for days and days at a time and you're like dying. And then you get those, those steroids to settle it down. That is also working on inflammation. So hopefully that makes it a little bit clearer exactly what the link is between inflammation and migraine and why this matters for us. You know, you can certainly hit the problem at the end you know, once the headache has already happened, you can take medications to block what's happening down here, or you can go back upstream, so to speak, and say, wait, why is my body so inflamed? What is going on here? How do I stop the inflammation at its source so that my body is not constantly reacting to the inflammation, triggering headaches, and all the other things that inflammation can do, fatigue, joint pain, brain fog, all the other things that uh, symptoms that inflammation can cause in the body. All right. So hope that makes sense. How leaky gut can be happening. And uh, even if you're not aware of it and how that contributes to migraines and how the solution isn't necessarily to just keeping take, keep taking medications to treat the pain in the head. The solution is to get at the source of the inflammation, which is oftentimes the gut. Not 100%, but this is part of the picture for a lot of people, and this is a problem that is often missed. And when we fix it, people get better. They don't need as many medications. Their body feels better in every way because we're not just treating the end result of the headache in the head. We're taking it a step back. We're treating the inflammation at its source, and then the rest of your body feels better too. Your brain fog gets better. Your joint pain gets better. Your sluggishness gets better. And so you actually are fixing a root cause of headaches. All right. Take care, everybody. If you want to learn more, check out migraineclass.com, little video I put together for you that goes over uh, this in a little more detail and some other root causes of headaches. Okay. All right. Bye.